Today, we're going to talk about Homer and Greek mythology. Because I have to make this video as short as possible, it is impossible for me to tell every single Greek mythology in this video. Okay, first, what is mythology? Mythology is from the Greek word from the word mythos and logos. It means it's a collection of stories about people, places, event, culture, and even religion. Even though the stories are fictions, but then again, the people who adopt the story, the people who kept the story, they take it seriously. The word myth itself, it means it's a story about past event in the past that has something to do with a supernatural being or person. Now, the collections of myth, we call it as a mythology. So, mythology is the collections of myth. Now, different culture, different nations, they have their own mythology. We have Greek mythologies, which is belongs to the Greeks, Norse mythology, which is belong to the Nordic people, and we also have Egyptian mythology, which is belongs to the ancient Egyptian people. For this video, we are going to specialize on the Greek mythology. Now, why as a Christian we have to learn about the Greek mythology? Reason number one, because it inoculate us. Inoculate is like an injection that you got on your forearm. Yes, it's a very painful and then some of you guys are screaming and crying when you have to line up in the clinic and then like the doctor kind of like injects something on your forearm. The purpose of that injection is to make your immune system stronger. So the same thing, as we are learning this Greek mythology, it gives you some immunity in all of this false religion and false teachings about this kind of like foreign idols or foreign gods as a Christians. The second thing is, by learning about the Greek mythology, we will understand better about Greek culture and also the Roman cultures. Because these Greek and Roman cultures, these are like the early Western civilization. And then somehow we are, somehow, we are still influenced by the Greek and Roman culture. And third, last but not least, reason like why we have to learn the Greek mythology is it introduced to us the richness of the Western civilization literature or simply books and writings. For example, the terms of Achilles heel. You will not going to be fully understand of the what does it mean by Achilles heel if you do not know the story about Achilles or for example the word Herculean task. You will not going to understand the meaning of that word if you do not know how difficult it is for Hercules to finish all of the 12 tasks. It's almost too impossible, Herculean task. Or, I hope this never happens with your computer, your computer just infected with a Trojan virus. Now what does that mean? Of course, you will not going to fully understand the concept about Trojan virus without knowing the story or the mythology about the Trojan war. So let us jump in into the Greek mythology itself. As I said earlier in this video, the mythology is collections of myth, collections of stories about places, people, event, or even religions in the past. It was being uniquely belongs to the Greek culture. Of course, the name itself, like it's a Greek mythology, of course, it's be it belongs to the Greek culture. Why mythology? It's the way that the ancient culture used to describe or to explain the worlds around them the particular events that happens in their life or in their history or even like the the unexplainable supernatural phenomenon that happens in their life now let us be easy on them okay now in the modern times of course our knowledge about science our knowledge about nature is so much better than people in the ancient times but do not let that facts fools you by thinking that people in the past are dumb not at all they have their own wisdom, they have to, their own way to explain the worlds around them. Other than those two great works, Homer also writes several poems for the Greek gods or the Greek deities. Now, some of the terms that you need to understand whenever you start to read Greek mythology, there are three types of being, okay? There are three types of being in the Greek mythology. First is the gods or the deities. Second is the demigods, and then the last one is the hero or the mortals or the humans. Now let me describe to you like one by one briefly. In the Greek mythology, the Greek gods is being described, it, they look exactly looks like a human being, and then they behave and they act like a human being. They can be sinful, they can be like very cunning, they can be nice at the same time, 
and they are being kind of like just like acting like a human being basically but only the difference is these beings these gods are immortal and then they are powerful now the second type the second type of being in the greek mythology known as a demigod now the word demi do not let the word confuse you the word demi means half so the word demigod it means kind of like you know half god half human half mortals okay so usually these demigods are the offspring of the offspring of a marriage between the gods or one of the human or sometimes animal yeah demigods gods and human and of course they have a superpower ability but not as powerful as the gods last type of being in the greek mythology known as the heroes or the simply humans okay these are human who have a limited lifespan which is eventually they will die but yet they have a unique ability or have a unique quality but sometimes these heroes are also the offspring the marriage between gods and human between gods and human for example hercules or achilles or theseus for example now there is possibility that these heroes they can be upgraded into a god for, for example hercules hercules because of his quality as a hero he was being promoted as god and did i say like the greek gods they act and behave like a human being yes exactly they can be very unpredictable they can be very sinful as just as human being could be so what i'm trying to say is no matter how attractive these gods are according to your fantasy what i do not want you guys to be is to pledging your allegiance pledging your allegiance to these greek gods no that's not my point okay because if you do so if you pledge your allegiance or you are like worshiping them that means we fall into the sins of idolatry because the greek gods were unpredictable the ancient greeks they are not sure how to worship these gods they were not sure like you know what makes them angry and what makes them happy what will happen to them what will happen to these worshipers they felt kind of like confused they always felt anxious they felt anxious because they are not sure what will happen to them did they offend their god did they make their gods happy this unpredictable characters we know it as the capricious so you can say the greek gods are capricious yes capricious is a new word i want you guys to write it down on your notebook capricious it means unpredictable mood sometimes they are happy then they will bless the people sometimes they are mad then they will curse the people these are the greek gods compare it with our god compare it with our true living god is our god capricious i don't think so we can trust his character is remain the same he is the same always and forever our god is good and our god is holy and our god is just the creation story according to the greek mythology in the beginning there was chaos and then there was this two being known as the sky and also the earth the sky is i know it's kind of a bit weird apparently it's a male someone a very powerful being someone by the name of uranos he was the lord of the sky he was the king he was the he was the ruler of the sky and we got gaia as the mother of the earth so earth was female the sky was male and the earth is female and they fell in love and they got married from that marriage between the lord of the sky which is oranos and also like the mother earth by the name of gaia they produce children these children are very powerful they are also very destructive the the first 12 no the first 12 children known as the the titans i mean depends on which version that you are subscribing to these titans can be described as as tall as a mountains they are very powerful six of them are female and six others are males one of the titans known as cronus or the time yes synonymly being known as a the time and other than that is titanus or female titan by the name of rhea now pay attention to these two names and i will come back and talk about them later soon okay now other than 12 titans mother earth or gaia produce another children but this time the children's they are these children's are monstrous for example the giant with only one eyes known as a cyclops and 50 headed giant monster this last children of gaia the lords of the sky which is oranos the husband or the father not happy with them 
this, and then this horrible father by the name of Oranos put this ugly monstrous children inside of prison under a mountain known as the Tartarus. Yes, Tartarus. No, got nothing to do with the sauce, but yes, has something to do with the horrible, fiery, dark place. Okay? Gaia as the mother. Of course, every mother will love their children no matter what. So, the Mother Earth or Gaia are not happy that Oranos put the children in prison. The monstrous children, the Cyclops and also the, the ten-headed monster. So, then she later encouraged and helped Cronus, one of the one of the titan, to fight to rebel against his father. And there was this fight between Oranos and Cronus. And as a result, Oranos, he was defeated. And then Cronus, he proclaimed himself now as the lord of the sky, according to the mythology. And, okay, this is getting weird. Cronus later on married with his sister by the name of Rhea. And then they become husband and wife and they produce children. Now, somehow, Cronus was afraid that what he did to his father will exactly the same what happened to him if he have a children. So he was afraid that someday one of his children will rebel against him, will fight against him. So because of that fear, Cronus, he horribly, he ate one by one all of his children. He swallowed all of his children inside of his stomach. Again, this is a Greek mythology. The story will not going to be make sense and the story will gonna be weird, but bear with me, okay? Now, as he swallowed one by one, of course, Rhea, the mother, of course, Rhea is angry and Rhea is not happy with this kind of like decision that her husband did by swallowing all of the children. So, the youngest of all of the children is someone by the name of Zeus. So, Rhea hide Zeus somewhere in a cave. So, Rhea hide Zeus somewhere in a cave in an island by the name of Crete Island. Rhea make sure that her husband did not realize that somehow she has another baby by the name of Zeus. So as the times goes by, the baby Zeus grew up as a strong, handsome god. Now, when the time is right, and then finally the time is right, Rhea encouraged and helped Zeus to rebel against his father, which is Cronus. Rhea tricked Cronus by eating some kind of like poison that makes him throw up. As Cronus threw up, all of the remaining five children that has been inside of his stomach, one by one, comes out from his mouth. The first one is Hestia. The second one is Demeter. The third one is Poseidon. The fourth one is Hades. And the fifth one was Hera. Five of them in total. Plus one, which is Zeus. Now it becomes six of them. Okay, Zeus basically rescued his older siblings from his father's stomach. And after that, Zeus set free of the Cyclops and also like the 50-headed monster who are the 50-headed monster who are being kept in the Mount Tartarus. And together, they're joined together to fight against his father, Cronus. Now, Cronus was not alone. He too, he was being helped by his siblings, the Titans. So, yes, the battle between uncle and aunties versus the nephew and the niece. It was an epic battle. It was a very destructive battle. The earth was shaken. And then by the end of the battle, of course, Cronus was defeated. The Titans were defeated. Zeus and the five other siblings, they won. As a punishment, Cronus and the rest of the Titans, they were being imprisoned under the Mount Tartarus. As for Zeus and his older siblings, they rule the earth together. None of them are higher than anyone else. Well, actually, yeah, still, Zeus, somehow, he have a special position. So they proclaim themselves now as the Olympians. Why Olympians? Because they decided to build the palace for them on the top of Mount Olympus, somewhere in Greece. These six Greek gods are the original Olympians. Just like those kind of like movie Avengers, there's the original Avengers. And later on, they will have additional members of the Olympians. And the additional members of the Olympians are Aphrodite, Hephaestus, Ares, Apollo, Artemis, Athena, Persephone, Hermes, and Dionysius. Yes, I use my cheat note and I put my cheat note somewhere there behind the camera. And there you go. Thank you for watching. I see you guys next week. Bye-bye. God bless you guys all.